we obliterate it, we're going to use transparent paints, at least semi-transparent paints. And so the terminology we use for that is glazing. So when I glaze something, it basically does this to it. You know, you can say, here's a, here's a glaze on top of, of my screen. You can still see most everything going on. It's a pretty dark one. I'll put a little lighter glaze on. This is a really subtle one, but you can see the temperature has changed. Uh, and so we're just affecting what's underneath without, without completely losing it, unless it's our, our desire to lose it. Here's the intermediate one. There we go. So that'd be kind of a nice glaze. For instance, in my shirt, the black shirt, but there's a little bit of information going on. When I glaze over it, it kind of just unifies those shadows even more. Or let's say, let's look right, right here. There's some different colors in the shadows, but when I glaze over it, it kind of unifies into one, one solid shadow mass. There's still some information there. So that's the effect of a glaze. It unifies everything underneath. It obscures some things, but you can still see the painting. You can still see the detail. You can still see the environment, my face but everything gets a few shades darker. So that would be called a general glaze. If, you, if I am the painting that we're looking at and I were to do this with paint, we'd call that a general glaze over the entire thing. And sometimes that's really useful, uh, let's say to invoke moonlight or the time of day that it is. If we've got too many different uh, lights and darks, there's a lot of different, you know, a lot of different information and everything's looking too bright. Maybe it gets too light. Uh, and we want to push everything back and unify it. A glaze over the entire painting is a great way to do that. I often find myself uh, glazing gradients across my canvases. Yeah. You know, I find that, you know, it really would be nice to have the top fall back a little bit. So, you know, it'll be like a, you know, a, a hazing out that'll take the entire canvas, uh, the, the entire length of the canvas to drop out. Right. And some amazing color mixtures to do that as well. If you, they glazed from your light source in a warmer color toward your, uh, you know, toward your shadows, just sort of a warmer glaze. Um, you know, that's a great way to get some interesting color effects, optics that you could never mix. I mean, at this point we could say, uh, you know, that I've got these browns going on. I know it's burnt sienna. And then once I add, you know, a, a blue glaze to it, for instance, it, it's creating a, a, a degree of subtlety in some of those more, uh, more mid-tone areas that would be not impossible, but difficult for me to mix on the palette and actually place correctly. So it, there's a layer of complexity that comes through, through the interaction of glazes and optical mixtures is what we would call that as opposed to palette mixtures. Um, I often use glazing, at least general glazing over the whole painting, if I'm going to do that um, in the mid stages of a painting, like I would do it now, we're gonna kind of go for a finished move today. So I, I won't necessarily do this on this piece. It, it creates a longer dance back and forth to finish a painting. But I, I would tend to use it to unify things in the middle of a painting and then start to identify local color in objects and separate them more after that. Um, some painters would use a, a glaze over the entire painting right at the end. And one example of this would be a, a seascape lit by a, you know, a brilliant sun in the middle of the day. Uh, maybe there's just a really subtle yellow, uh, yellow glaze that goes over the whole thing. And it just sort of unifies disparate elements and says all of these things are within the envelope of that really bright sun. You know, that'd be one use of a, a full general glaze as well. What we'll tend to do is more local glazing, more sort of picking area by area. Everything's very unified in these underpaintings. It's all in this brown scale or it's all in this gray scale. It was very unified to begin with. And I'm going to start sort of pulling it apart and making things more individuated. But there's, there's not really one way to go about that. I have made a, a kit. That's what these are from. These are just um, like photography gels, basically, that I found really useful to hold in front of a painting before I'm gonna uh, put a glaze on it to try to figure out what color that's gonna turn things. Mm -hmm. you know, looking at it uh, and I wanna just understand what are the optical effects. This is very similar to what would happen with paint. And so you can find often at a paint store, you can order them like a whole book of little color swatches and that can be extremely useful. Not doing too much, I'll start on the gray. 
um, you know, it can be extremely useful before going full strength into a, into a color, you're not sure if it's gonna work out right. Another way to play with that would be to get yourself some clear acetate because these don't actually relate to pigments. This is, these are CMYK calibrated. I, I got a series of these that, that I put into a, a toolkit that I made at one point. I don't have these anymore because they were too labor intensive to produce, but mm -hmm. David Heskin's secret uh, mixed technique glazing tools. And I made a whole little kit to teach my student or to share with my students. But you could, you could certainly buy a, a sheet of clear acetate and then take the actual, actual paint that you're going to use and do color swatches, glazes on those, say with liquid, something that will dry quickly on there, cut those apart, and then use those so you know exactly this tube of paint is going to create exactly, um, you know, exactly this look on your painting. And that could be really useful if you're learning the scope of what your paint is able to do. And, you know, depending well, especially on if you're, if you were trying to, to actually match something. Let's say you're trying to match somebody's skin tone or you're trying to match uh, eye color or, or, you know, anything that's specific like that. Right. Take some of the guesswork out. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. Everyone in the uh, comments is uh, very much interested in, in the glaze things that you were just showing. They're all like, yeah, <laughs> tips. Wow. Well, I would just say, look online, look for uh, photography gels and you can get a little like for eight bucks. They'll send you a whole set of, they're smaller, but they're meant for to put over your flash or to put over your, uh, you know, for a camera. So look into photography uh, color gels. And for like $8, you can do yourself a world of good for sure. This was just my proprietary ridiculous thing that I put together. Um, there was more than just the gels in here. I had set up a whole series of, of these light gradients and imagery. Uh -huh. Um, actually, I did this from a portrait because I was in, in the painting technique I was teaching. Um, for instance, there was a portrait and I would isolate sort of the general look of the portrait. Here I would isolate the highlights and I could put gel layers between these, overlay them and see how about four, four to five layers of paint were, would interact for my students. So it was a really, you know, the key way to get into it. But it was for a specific uh, painting technique that was you know, kind of down the rabbit hole. So yeah, I told these for like 80 bucks, you can get for $8, you can get yourself a set of gels, no problem. Yeah, easy. Cool. Any other questions I should address in the chat yet? Or are we good to go? Oh, gosh. Uh, I mean, I guess for the folks who are about getting ready to start, uh, I mean, everyone's got their own uh, reference and that sort of thing. I guess any advice on uh, what mediums they should have handy and that kind of thing? Sure. I mean, I think today we could just um, play with, you know, if some people have a cold prep oil, I think we'll try to keep it mostly to just straight oil. We, we used our solvents last time in our underpainting layer to keep it thinner. This time, just, just straight up oil. I've got, a, I've got a disposable palette and a very simple selection of colors, which will be the same as last